Hello, welcome to our talk about Kernel Development Learning Pipeline Program that Joel and I have started at Red Hat, KDLP for short. I'm Julia Denham. My name is Joel Savitz, uh, and today we will give you an introduction to our program. So, uh, first, a little agenda. So we'll begin by describing what this is, what KDLP is, why we would want to do such a thing. Uh, then we'll give a brief overview of the program, uh, which includes an introduction to Linux kernel development course, uh, some various things related to internships and mentoring, uh, and this new kernel devs program group that's part of some initiatives that we have to get people involved in kernel uh, and grow the kernel groups at Red Hat. Uh, then we'll talk about some of the program growth, some of the exciting things that, that have been happening, uh, internal and external connections, uh, connection with the uh, Linux Foundation and their mentorship program, uh, then we'll talk about some of the success stats, a little bit of the numbers, and finally wrap up with some resources uh, so you, know, you guys can get involved if you'd like. So first of all, just to make it abundantly clear, what is KDLP? The main idea is that we are trying to build a comprehensive pipeline for Linux kernel talent. And it's difficult to get people into the kernel, and so we want to build a pipeline. So okay, first a little bit of history. Where did this come from? Uh, so I went to UMass Lowell. Uh, and that about halfway through, I did a co-op with Red Hat. Uh, just completely by chance, I ran into this manager who was hiring at an event he wasn't really supposed to be recruiting at, and I ended up in this co-op. And if it weren't for that, I never would have encountered the Linux kernel. I never would have known where to look to get started. I wouldn't have even really known about it. So anyways, uh, as sort of a side thing, I became involved in an initiative to improve Fedora usability, stability, and performance on the Raspberry Pi platform. Uh, and then along the way, so I, you know, kind of focused more on the low-level stuff, and there, you know, there are some kind of there are some gaps between, um, you know, what uh, you know what I had learned in the co-op, and then what people generally were familiar with from their computer science education. So long story short, we ended up developing this into a bit of a study group to learn about kernel drivers for the Raspberry Pi, uh, and then. That B was a part of a directed study, like credit bearing directed study type of type of course, sort of independent project, that eventually became uh, more of a class-like type of thing with a small group. We ended up making some slides, um, you know, through the help of the Red Hat Research Department. We ended up bringing in some interns to help work on the project and you know further work on the Raspberry Pi stuff. The course became more developed. Uh, we got more interns. You know, eventually we pitched the, the program to uh, the RHEL, Red Hat's, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL's Shark Tank program, uh, and we got the sponsorship of, uh, of Mike McGrath. Big thanks to him for sending us here. Um, and from there, we continued to develop the program until it became a full-on, you know, credit-bearing course, or, you know, a regular course, uh, academic course that we uh, created. It's, you know, all the stuff is open source, uh, and we will continue to talk about that later on. Uh, but for now, turn it over to Julia to talk a little bit about why we're doing this. Okay. So why did we start this program? So we noticed that uh, many Linux kernel engineers are getting close to the retirement age. Um, I started at Red Hat three years ago full time and I've already seen a couple retire. We've also noticed that it's really hard to find qualified candidates for, the pro or for kernel engineering. And most colleges nowadays don't even teach C programming, which is hard to do kernel without C programming. Um, so we, uh, oh, and kernel onboarding also takes uh, a lot longer than the average onboarding time. So our solution to this was to create the qualified uh, candidates for uh, kernel engineering. Um, so there are three main pillars to the program, the course, uh, the internship, and then full-time work. So students will learn concepts in the course. They will practice them with weekly assignments that are similar to things that they would be doing full-time at a company. Uh, depending on how the class goes, they could get an internship at Red Hat, interning on Kernel, uh, using all the skills they learned in class, um, helping with the program, and then depending on how that goes, they could be full-time kernel engineer at Red Hat. And Joel is going to go into the specifics uh, of each of the pillars. Yeah, thank you, Julia. So first of all, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the introduction to Linux kernel development course. 
so the general idea with this is to kind of give a meta overview of the kernel. Because uh, as you know, it's a gigantic project. There's not a single developer who knows how to you know, rewrite the entire thing. No one is a master of any of the subsystems. So what subsystem do we really focus on? Uh, and the answer is pretty much none of them. You know, we go into a couple, but the general idea is to teach people how to teach themselves, right? Teach people how they can get involved in the community, how they can properly interact with the community while using the you know, community standards, which you know, we know about those, right? Uh, and so the prerequisites for this course are just a general background knowledge of C, an advanced knowledge of C mainly, and uh, basic Linux experience. I mean, generally programming experience as well uh, is, is extremely helpful. Uh, but the overall idea is to get sort of a tour of the different parts of the kernel, uh, some of the different tools that you can use to interact with the kernel, how to do, you know, how to navigate the code, you know, things like Cscope, Elixir, some basic tracing, you know, BPF, you know, specifically the BPF trace implementation front end, and, uh, you know, some basic F trace concepts. Right, which are things that you know, once you're pointed to, they're very useful, but you wouldn't even know really where to look unless you spent a lot of time running around in circles or you got lucky enough to find a mentor or just you know, get, uh, find yourself somehow at Red Hat uh, in you know, a particular department. So everything we do is open source, of course. You know, that's that's uh, open source or uh, open course. Uh, and we've developed a credit-bearing undergraduate and graduate university level course that we teach at University of Massachusetts Lowell in Boston, or in the Boston area. Uh, and that, you know, that we've been running in its current form for two semesters now. We just finished the last one back in May. Uh, and recently we've been piloting a mentorship program on the Linux Foundation's uh, LFX platform, thanks to um, partnership with, with Shua Khan, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the main idea and our main philosophy with this course is that we want to teach difficult material from first principles. So then, the idea is, you know, with internships generally, the idea is to bring people in who have some idea, well, to, to test them out in an environment where, you know, you're not making a huge commitment to them, right? And they, you know, they're not necessarily, you know, signing on to the whole, to the whole, to the whole thing. They're trying something out that they, you know, they may not know whether they like it, right? So you get an opportunity to kind of vet them and do a three to six months or, you know, or longer inter uh, basically interview, right? And see if they are A, qualified to work in, the, in this particular area, and B, that they actually like it, that they actually enjoy it, right? That it's something they want to spend their, their time doing. So with that, what if we, we thought, what if we went back a step further, right? What if we take, you know, where we're working already at the university level, kind of at a semi, you know, training wheels type of internship, and, you know, we're already thinking, like, do they like the kernel? Do they like, uh, do, you know, are they, are they competent at working on the kernel? Do they, you know, do they enjoy working on it? And uh, from there, we can bring them in and, you know, internships already. I mean, I know a manager who was saying he doesn't even like doing three-month internships in the kernel, right? Because by the time they have the absolute basics, uh, it's time for them to go. I mean, even six months is not very long. You know, I extended mine to eight months. I still barely knew what I was doing at the end of it. So uh, the idea is if we can get people uh, set up with some of the tools, the ecosystem, right, some of the, uh, you know, the Git email patches. I didn't mention that earlier, but that's a very big important component of our course, getting extremely familiar with Git and email patches, right, because if you can do that, you know, that's, that's a big part of the, the hurdle into getting involved in the community. Uh, but if you can do those things, if you have this competency, then when you get to your internship, you can actually hit the ground running and accomplish a lot more in three to six months than you otherwise would, right? And so by the time that we actually recruit them uh, to full time, ideally, they can hopefully shorten that two year mentor, or two year onboarding window that Julia mentioned uh, to you know, a lot shorter uh, and then you know, saving everyone involved time and money, which is great. So at the same time, we wanna support the key initiatives within Red Hat, right? And target people towards areas that, you know, that are growth areas uh, and train new talent, right? While um, while focusing on areas that people otherwise wouldn't really be exposed to. So, and now I'll hand it over to Julia to talk about some of the uh, initiatives that we're doing within Red Hat to uh, bring people involved and bring new people and interns um, you know, together to uh, learn more about the kernel. So one aspect of the program is this group called the New Kernel Devs Group. It's a way to kind of connect all the different pillars of the program. Um, it's an internal group at Red Hat where kernel engineers of any level can come 
So we have a chat, so you can always uh, send messages in chat or on the email list, or you can come to our reoccurring monthly meeting and ask questions, give presentations. Like if you're new and you want to practice giving a presentation, it's the perfect space to do it. Or if you're nervous about asking a question, you can come and uh, ask in this group. Um, so program growth. Um, throughout starting this program, we have partnered with uh, different organizations within Red Hat, um, including Red Hat Academy. Um, they have spent, they've sponsored us to go to a few conferences. They've helped us out learn um, how to work with colleges. Um, and we've also met with their curriculum team uh, to potentially get our curriculum up on their platform, but that will take a lot of time. But they were very interested in it, which is awesome. Um, we've also worked with the intern program in Waterford, Ireland, uh, work with Julia Blay. We ran a workshop, a kernel engineering workshop, once every two weeks for, I think, four months uh, for a group in Ireland. It was virtual. Um, and one of the uh, interns in that uh, workshop actually just accepted a full-time offer, which we're super excited about. We've also been uh, working with um, a few other uh, intern programs at Red Hat, and we're hoping that uh, we'll partner maybe with Brno or Israel in the future. And then our newest program integration is with the Linux Foundation uh, that Joel will talk about right now. Thank you, Julia. Yes, yeah, so to build on that point about the Linux Foundation, uh, so last year at LPC, uh, you know, we were talking to different people about the program, you know, I ended up talking to uh, Greg Cole Hartman, uh, telling him about what we're doing. He was saying, oh, you know, we already have something like that. We have the, uh, the you know, kernel bug fixing thing. He said, you should talk to Shua Khan. So I was introduced to her, and we started talking about her mentorship platform, kind of comparing some of what we're doing and what she's doing. And we found that by, by, um, by working together and uh, by offering our course on, on their platform, uh, we could provide some complementary content uh, and you know, and strengthen uh, the value of the, the service that we're providing while also adding something to the Linux Foundation. So she was very helpful in, in working with us on this. Uh, and so we've piloted having a Linux Foundation you know, mentorship group cohort in our course this past semester. You know, and we learned a lot from that, you know, but it was a very good pilot program. And at the same time, we got UMass Lowell students involved with the Linux Foundation's mentorship platform and got them kind of a nice, you know, get their names on there for being involved in Linux, right? It's a nice thing that, that they can have. They can show hiring managers, put it on their resume, right? It also actually unlocks, um, you know, some Linux Foundation programs that are only open to graduated mentees. So that's very cool. It also allowed us to have probably the most diverse group of mentees or you know students, you know, you know different terms, right? That we've ever had, uh, or that we could have possibly had if we were only working in Boston. You know, we had people from all continents, pretty much. Well, not Antarctica, right? But we had people, <laughs> people in uh, you know yet. a few African countries. Uh, I think Nigeria and um, I don't know. There's another one. Uh, some people in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, I think we had three or four in India who were interested, a couple in New York, in Texas, there's one guy in Peru, really all over the world, which was very cool. So uh, next, I'll talk a little bit about some of the numbers, some of the, some of the, uh, the, uh, the technicals here, right? So this three, right, actually it was two until like a week ago, right? We've had three full-time hires come through the program uh, in various forms. And uh, through our efforts, we were able to uh, get them interested in kernel, teach them a little bit about kernel, uh, and then place them within various kernel groups, right? And so we have some, some relatively new talent there, which is exciting. Uh, there were two people who did co-ops with us that really liked Red Hat, uh, but it was a difficult time for Red Hat hiring, and they were both recruited to Amazon and Microsoft because they were good at what they were doing. One of them, and this is an interesting thing about our program, uh, he liked working at Red Hat so much, and he liked the environment, that he decided the Amazon juice really wasn't worth the squeeze, and he wants to come back. You know, he, he really liked the Red Hat environment, and uh, yeah, so he actually left Amazon recently, fun fact. 
But overall, we've had seven interns and co-ops who have been vetted and trained by our program and then come through uh, and do internships with our, uh, with our group uh, in various forms. Some of them less connected, working with other teams, some of them working a little more closely with us, working on the program. And overall, uh, it's approximately 30 students and mentees uh, completed introduction to Linux kernel, uh, kernel development during the past academic year, which we're happy to announce is the most diverse group ever by gender and location. So a little bit of program information. Um, so who runs this? Uh, it's Joel and I. We have um, Charlie, who started out as a student, then he was an intern, and now he's full time. And he is our course content lead. Um, and then we have Dennis, who has interned with us. Well, he took the class, then he interned for a year. He unfortunately has to go back to college, but we're hoping he will come back to Red Hat when he graduates. Um, so uh, one thing is this program is not part of our full-time job. We do a lot of this work on the side, um, and we work closely with our executive sponsor, uh, who we'd like to thank, which is Mike McGrath. Um, and we'd also like to thank Heidi Dempsey, who's uh, been helping us out a lot with uh, dealing with the interns. And here are a few resources to leave everyone with. We have a mailing list uh, that we send a quarterly update newsletter to. Um, so if you just want to be informed about the program, that is something that you can join. Low traffic. <laughs> um, or you, if you have a specific question, you can reach out to Joel or I. And then we have a website, um, and that has all the course information. And like we said, it's all open source. So if you're just interested in Looking through some kernel slides, that is the perfect place to do it. Um, yeah, so any questions? How do you feel people would react um, about shifting things around to make the kernel distribution work a little closer to what people usually see after they let the, you know, after they start working in computing today nowadays, like, start making our first contributions using like GitLab, GitHub, full CI, maybe GitHub own CTI or, or something like that. And then you lead them to towards the the actual kernel workflow like ah now now that you know how kernel works and you send your first patch through GitHub, try to send a patch through the mailing list and all that mess. And so how do you feel people would react to that? So our philosophy with the uh, Git email patch stuff that we do is that, um, well, it's very tricky to learn, right? It's very finicky. Uh, and so we, the first few assignments are, you know, we provide a couple of chances where it's, the, the real challenge is just doing the email patches, really. Like you send some email patches, you get it going. Uh, and the idea is, you know, it's really, it's a stripped down version of Git where you really understand the fundamentals of like what Git is, right? Because there's a lot of extra abstraction that's added on GitLab, that's added on GitHub. And those are very useful tools, right? But they kind of build on this abstraction that, you know, Git was originally created by Linus Torvalds to work with his other project, the Linux kernel, right? And so by making people do it many, many times, they get really good at it and they get a really solid understanding and a, a firm foundation about what Git itself is that would allow them to go to GitHub, to go to GitLab, and then in their minds have a more clear separation of the abstraction of GitLab and you know pull requests. Like, what is a pull request? Well, on the mailing list, it's someone sends an email requesting a maintainer to pull from their branch, right? It was a little confusing, I remember, when I started out to say, like, well, pull request, like, how does that relate? But I think by learning, you know, the original workflow and uh, really hammering it in so they really have it well, well trained in their mind, uh, they get a good understanding of Git, they get a solid foundation for working with the kernel, and, uh, and then they're able to better understand uh, the other abstractions, and I think work with them even better. How, how does the introduction to the sub-maintainer or maintainer or that sort of thing work? Is it explicit? Do you, do you connect someone with the sub-maintainer as a part of the kernel, uh, or do you, uh, you know, Describe how to present yourself, how to interact, how to submit your patch, how to how to have that conversation, or how, how does that part work? Well, 
we probably could get more sub maintainers involved. That's an interesting idea. But uh, what we have them do is, so they're not, you know, they're submitting email patches against a uh, base repository that's like our assignments repository. Uh, there is a point where they do generate patches right now. I mean, we're making some changes, but they generate patches against the kernel and they include that patch as a part of another patch, which is like a little confusing for them. Uh, and then they send it to mailing lists where, you know, other students have, uh, as a part of their, you know, their grade, they review each other's patches and they get feedback from each other. It would be interesting to integrate more of the, the sub-maintainer kind of workflow, uh, but I think that's, that's, uh, that's an interesting point. That's not something that we've, uh, we've integrated yet, but it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Repeat it. Was it the question? Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, we, um, partnered with, uh, Edulipta Challenge, I think is, is what it's called, um, is the question, and the answer is, it's been shut down. Um, they're not letting other people in. Uh, apparently it's a bunch of bash scripts that people don't want to maintain anymore. And, um, I mean, we probably... You know, I'll talk to Greg at some point if I see him. Maybe I'll mention it, but I think, I think they they want to move on from that at this point, unfortunately, because it was sort of yeah. I remember Greg mentioned some time back that they're trying to come up with a new model. Oh really? So it's not like they decided to shut down it but maybe it could be something where just a couple people write a bunch of bad scripts or reply a lot. Yeah, so yeah, the response is, you know, that uh, maybe there's a new model going on. Um, yeah, I mean, I, we've discussed this with uh, Shua Khan a little bit, and she was saying, like, she, you know, it's very, they're very protective also about the code, you know, because they use it to, you know, the source, because they use it to, to evaluate people, uh, and they really don't want this stuff getting out there. You know, some of the evaluation stuff, you know, you have people all around the world trying to, trying to break this stuff and, and, you know, show that they can, I mean, unfortunately, you know, kind of falsify that they've actually uh, completed some of these challenges. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. I mean, definitely, it's definitely a uh, interesting model. Funny story, someone actually mentioned, they came up to me after I did this talk at Boston, right? And they're like, hey, you know, do you remember Edu Lift a Challenge? You know, I was like, oh, when, when was that from? You know, like, what, what? And he was like, oh, like, back in, like, 2015, 14, it's like, well, yeah, I was I was in high school. Like, I I didn't know what was what was going on with Linux at the time, so it's a bit before my time. And um, but it would be interesting to try and work with Greg if if he's interested in that. But I don't know. From what we heard from Shua, it's it's no longer operative. If there's no other questions, thank you for attending our presentation.